Hello and dwarves, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, today we're going to take part of this Asus X55 series laptop. Uh, it's an X551C to be exact, and I believe this fellow is overheating because it cuts out shortly after being turned on. Um, now this thing came in missing all of the screws out the bottom of the laptop, so uh, sometimes screws do work themselves loose, but it's uncommon for them all to be gone, so I've no idea what kind of thing that this laptop has been enduring. Anyway, uh, let's carry on taking it apart and just see what it looks like on the inside and see if we can see what's going on. Now with all those screws taken out the bottom, theoretically I should just be able to split this case straight away. The keyboard is a solid piece on top so that doesn't need to come out. So I'm just going to dig a uh, prying tool in the side and just see if that starts popping open. Okay, now I just need to find, yeah, the keyboard and the trackpad are held on with uh, ribbon cables underneath. I'll just disconnect these and then I can point them out. And there's something else there. Yep, there's a power button as well. There we go. So we had these three here and they were connected to there, there and there. So just lift it up carefully and you'll see it. Okay, right, there's an integrated battery on this one, a very pointlessly integrated battery. You may as well just make it removable and then you can make it bigger. I don't know why they do this. Right, there's no uh, visual signs of problems here, um, although, oh, that doesn't sound very good. Fan, what's that? Oh my tweezers. There's a bit of plastic there, I don't know where that's come from. Possibly from the case somewhere. Um, it may well be that the, that the cooling fan was simply jammed. Um, we'll take the motherboard out just so we can carry on doing a visual inspection on the cooling system and make sure there are no other blockages there. screws not in properly either. This hard drive looks possibly aftermarket. No I lie it's not, it is the original hard drive. For a minute it looked like the hard drive might have been replaced and at that point I might have estimated that someone has previously taken this laptop apart and just done a poor job of reassembling it. But no, it's just literally every single screw in this thing is loose. So I think the laptop is literally just falling apart at the seams. Ah, I think I've just spotted where our bit of plastic came from. There's a missing piece of, there's a missing bar of plastic over this USB port here, where a USB device has been pushed in a bit too forcefully. So that's obviously worked its way in, travelled across, and then jammed up the fan. That would be my guess. Right. Oh my good grief. What the hell is that? What's this thing got in it? Apparently there's a Core i3 under there. This is obviously one of those stupid ultra low power CPUs. Just don't get me wrong, you know, they do save a lot of battery power and stuff like that and it's very impressive how efficient they are. But that is not a heat sink, I don't care. That, that's, that's crap, that's bollocks. The Pentium 166 in my first computer had a bigger heat sink than that did. Um, well, it's present and working, however, if the fan was jammed, then that thing's gonna have zero heat cooling. And with such a small heat sink, it's gonna get killed by heat soak very quickly. Now, in cooling systems, heat soak is where your, where your heat sink 
is completely saturated. It's as hot as it can get. It can't absorb any more heat off of the CPU. So without cooling, your temperatures then skyrocket. A very common fault is if you have a large heat sink with no fan on it, for example, the heat sink cannot cool the CPU fast enough. However, it takes it about 10 minutes to actually soak up all the heat before it overheats. That is called heat soak. So um, when the problem with cooling systems like this that have really small heat sinks is that if the active cooling, the fan, goes offline or is interrupted, because there's so little metal to absorb the heat, the temperatures skyrocket very quickly. And uh, that's also a problem because a lot of modern CPUs like these, they will work on a system called race to idle, where they produce a large amount of heat, but the idea is, is that they, are, um, they, they work in bursts. It's very fast and then it's idling again. So the theory is, is that the temperature on this will skyrocket, but, but before it becomes a problem, the CPU is idling again, so the temperature drops back down. But the long and the short of it is, this, this heatsink is stupidly small. However, there's nothing we can do about that. All we need to do is just make sure that there's nothing else blocking this fan, which there isn't. So, this entire thing can be attributed to that tiny piece of plastic, I think. So, we'll reassemble this, and we'll see if it's stopped overheating. Okay, right, start that back up again. Have we got any battery power? Yes, we do. And we'll just see how long that lasts now. Good Lord, this thing is slow. It's so slow. This is one of the reasons why I do, I include a service a standard on any computer I fix because even though this laptop is no longer cutting out, I can't bring myself to return a cut, this laptop to the customer as fixed while it's in this condition because this is not fixed, not by a long shot. Uh, we've got a couple of things going on here. Let's see if we can get directly to e drive like that. There we go. I just need to know if those temperatures are okay and then at least I can uh, switch off the camera for this video. Right, utilities, hardware monitor. Oh my god, even UAC is balked. There we go. Okay, right, so now we can see the temperatures on this thing. Uh, this is called Hardware Monitor, it's a free download. Um, so we can see um, the temperatures are pretty high, but I think that's deliberate to be honest. Um, the laptop is also sitting on my work mat, so it has got some airspace under there, we should be okay. Um, okay, so we've got temperatures that are floating around the 60 mark, it's spiked to 70 here or there. Um, I'm honestly not 100% certain what this CPU is happy with. Uh, what we're going to do though, I'm going to start up another utility that's just going to put a load on the CPU and that's just going to tell us whether we actually need to act on this or not. So um, let's go back into my utilities. And 
we're going to start up Orthos. I don't care of us, sod off. Oh god, I can't even abort that. There we go, right. Orthos, I don't even remember where I got this program from, but basically it runs uh, mathematical tests on the CPU and the RAM. Uh, it's good for burning in your CPU. Uh, if you want to do proper burning tests, I recommend getting something like Intel Burn Test. But this is a good, simple program that just gets the CPU thinking. So let's fire that up, and we should see these temperatures start spiking. I don't know if you can read the temperatures on the screen at the moment, but we're at about 75-ish. We're also seeing the fan speed ramp up, which is good, which means it's reacting to the high temperatures. It looks like the uh, it looks like the um, the thermal system on this is hunting for 60 for 70 to 75 degrees because as soon as it hits 76, the fan clocks up by another 100 RPM. So that's just slowly hunting for uh, 75. I'll let that run for about five minutes or so and just make sure that um, even at maximum RPM, it's still holding 75. Okay, so we've been running for 10 minutes on the dot now, and uh, the screen briefly turned off while I was um, unattending. However, as we can see, the actual highest marks have still been, it stayed under 85, and the CPU fan was steadily rising to that point. Now, 85 is a pretty horrifying temperature for a CPU. However, I'm pretty certain these, these low power CPUs are supposed to be doing that because as I mentioned with the whole race to idle thing, the idea is these things aren't designed to be under that kind of load for extended periods of time. And on average usage, it's not going to be under load for, for that kind of period of time. Because if you're doing lots of mathematical computations and rendering and stuff like that, don't buy a low power i3. So let's just turn that off and we should see the temperature will immediately plummet. As you can see, that's just dropping off by the second. And that will just drop down to about 60, and then as the CPU fan ramps down again, we'll probably see that build back up to about 60 to 65, as again, the thermal management just hunts for that happy idling temperature. The, uh, the air coming out of the side of the laptop is actually surprisingly cool, but there is steady airflow, so we can see that the fan is obviously doing its job now. So, that being the case, we have fulfilled the primary objective. So, I'm going to go away and service this thing now to sort out the agonizing low speed, although I can't work miracles when you've got a CPU that probably has about 1.2 gigahertz in it or something like that. What has this got, just for the record, I wonder? Um, computer, properties... Oh, 1.8 gigahertz. I'm sorry. We've uh, we've got 1.8 gigahertz. Anyway, don't buy these CPUs. They're crap. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>